Hello everyone. So in this video, we're going to be talking about in what order that SysMom processes the rules and filters that we put in our configuration files. This is going to be very helpful specifically for blue teamers as they're, or SOC operators as they're writing all of their configurations and they're testing and troubleshooting and trying to figure out why does this specific rule or filters not triggering. Most of the time, it could actually be that you have a conflict between them. Uh, the main reason for this is that Sysmon will only trigger one time per event type. So it is important that our rules, when we're looking at their coverage, that we don't have a specific filter or compound rule that is actually going to trigger before the one that we are actually trying to get to. So let's get to that. I think you guys are going to find this one very interesting. So let's go and do a demo. So to show how Sysmon processes the different filters and rules and in what order, I have multiple configurations here that I wanna to use to demo this. The first one that we're going to be going over, as you can see, I have my rule group here with an or statement and I, or process create, and I have two different filters inside of here. Both of them will actually trigger for IP config. The first one actually covers command line. The second one is the image. So if I run right now IP config in this machine, and I go over here, I'm going to do get sysmon process create event. You can hear, see that the image actually trigger for IP config. Now, what happens if I do an IP config all? If I do IP config all, we're going to be expecting the command line to trigger because it's first in, in my list, right? So when I run IP config all, and I go back here and I pull all of the events again, one of the things that we're going to notice is that when we look at the rule name, it's match image. We go over here and it says match image again. So that specific filter for command line, even though it's first never triggered. And the main reason for this is that Sysmon processes filters in the order that they appear in the schema itself. So if I do Sysmon minus S for the schema and I go over to process create, which is the first, uh, I think it's the first event. So here we go, create process. We see that image is actually first before command line. So Sysmon internally, as it processes this rule, and it saves it as a binary format into the registry, it actually orders all of the filters in accordance on how they appear in the schema itself. Now, this does not apply to rules. So if here in this configuration, what you're going to see is I have a compound rule and also I have filters in this case. So to make stuff simpler for us, I'm going to move this to the bottom. It's actually going to execute after the rule. Here you can see that I have high privilege IP config. So if I run IP config as administrator, it's actually going to trigger in this rule set. So let's click save on my rule here. Clear, and I'm going to do sysmon minus C. Rule group order. I'm going to apply the configuration. If I do sysmon minus C to confirm, I can see here that I have my compound rule and then I have my filters. So now let's run the same command, but first let me clear out the, conf uh, the uh, event. There we go. Now I'm going to run IP config all. And now when I go over here and I do get sysmon process create event. We have our event that was triggered and we see that it triggered on high privilege IP config. So it actually triggered on my compound rule. So 
But what happens if I move my individual filters above this rule? Remember, it is still the same rule group when an or we're still dealing with the same event type. The only difference is that now we have a mixture of filters and compound rules. So let me apply again the configuration. Let me clear the event. Let me run IP config again. Now when we go over here and we query the event log for Sysmon created process events, we're going to notice that the rule name that it matched was match image. So as you can see, depending on how we mix filters and compound rules inside of a given event type, it is the order that Sysmon is actually going to process those. That means that we have to be extra careful as we're writing our rules to make sure that we're able to test validate and make sure that that rule order does not affect us in any way. So as you saw, it's very important, the rule order and the order of the filters and how we apply them. Are we mixing for that event type compound rules or we only have filters or yeah, it's really important. Why? Because sometimes you may want to have better coverage and you can write one rule that is always triggering, but then the other rules that finesse and provide more context uh, for edge cases will probably never trigger because that general rule does. Also, it's important for us and how do we organize all of those rules in our file? What order should we put them in? Should we just set up, depending on the attack type that we want to cover, group them together and put comments in our configuration file? Lots of stuff to think about that you need to take into account as you're writing your own rules. This is going to be specific for environment and capabilities for that, that the team has throughout their tools and knowledge. So I hope that this video was useful to you. And remember, uh, do follow along with the series and keep watching the other videos. And yeah, like and subscribe. Thank you.